the Black Emperor, Kurokote. No doubt you've probably heard of her by now, particularly if you've played mobile games like Arcaea or Cytus, kept up to date with BMS, or touched Osu within the past decade. But if you don't know of her, she's an artist very well known for her versatility and her expressive takes when it comes to composition. With some of the things I've heard her make, I don't think it's a stretch to say that she's spearheading an approach to rhythm game-esque music that has an emphasis on artistic expression rather than who can make the hardest boss song. Not that there's anything wrong with that though. This is an artist in particular that I've been wanting to talk about because I think she's one of the most, I guess, misinterpreted artists at the moment. Usually when someone mentions Kurokote, two songs immediately come to mind, Scattered Faith and Galaxy Collapse. Obviously these songs are insanely popular and that's great, but I think that it's unfortunate that these two songs seem to completely overshadow anything else within her discography, to an extent that I haven't seen with any other major rhythm game artists as of yet. The majority of people I ask who know of Kuro seems to know her as the one that made Galaxy Collapse, rather than someone that makes amazing music. So not only do I want to deep dive into her history, but also give you a glimpse of what's beyond just those two songs. Cause trust me, you find that it's worth the effort looking past the surface of the world Krokote has created for herself. Kurokote is a French composer whose rhythm game roots come all the way back to around 2010, when she stumbled across Oz for the first time. Going under the alias Diago Gadu 77, she slowly became hooked to the game, taking heavy interest in Oz Taiko. Not only would she become very skilled in that aspect, but she would also begin having a look at the charting scene, with her earliest maps being from 2012, and her earliest ranked map being the Connect R map set, ranked on the 17th of June. 2013. She'd remain active within the community for a few years and also venture around other room games, including GB Plus, Beat Mania, and Cytus, before becoming inspired to create some music herself between 2013 and 2014. Now, it's unknown what her previous musical experience is, besides having played violin for several years at that point, but regardless, she appeared to be coming in with absolutely no DTM experience. And armed with FL Studio, she began to upload her earliest tracks onto SoundCloud with the alias Kurokote, which actually stems from her love of the track Black Emperor by Chroma. A lot of her earliest tracks have been privated or deleted, but the ones we can find today are good examples of the kind of timing she was on. She was someone who enjoyed experimenting with different genres and styles early on, and was the type to draw heavy inspiration from the things she was actively listening to at the time. Some of her songs carry that chaotic aura of it being a shitpost. Case in point, this. And it also gives off the feeling of just screwing around the fruity loops for a few days to figure something out. But even then, with all her early tracks, you can see her potential. And one thing you'll notice as the video goes on is just how quickly her sound evolves and how she's able to quickly learn and adapt to an entirely new genre. Whether it's artcore, the earliest of which is represented by the song Art, which to me sounds heavily influenced by Kiryu's Q for at least the first half. Or Breakcore, represented by Mashiro, a song focusing a lot more on quick bursts of breaks and buzzes in succession with fast piano runs. Though I must say, I don't think there's anything on the planet that will prepare you for what this track evolves into. Extremely bass choice right there by Kurokote. This experience will end very nicely into her later tracks, but by far what quickly grew to be her bread and butter was hardcore and speedcore. Again, these drew inspirations from certain artists at first. For instance, Fiesta 440 is a track that's MIDI inspired, obviously being at 440 BPM and inherent in a lot of the chaos you'd usually hear in literally anything from him. The track that really stood out from the selection of early hardcore tracks, however, was a remix called Closed Eye. A remix of what, you may ask? I'll give you a hint. Toho. It seems that Kurokote was a big fan of the Toho soundtrack, and of course, that interest ended up extending into the Toho doujin scene, a huge web of circles and labels creating pieces inspired by Toho's soundtrack. These pieces extend across many different genres and many different sections of the internet, but one of the most vibrant is the hardcore scene. Using Toho's genius crafted melodies, artists take them and transform them into a high energy, high powered blitz of sound. And because of how versatile Toho's melodies usually are, the possibilities are quite literally endless. One of the most prominent artists who fall into this category is Moro, an artist whose style is on the extremely aggressive and extremely fast side, to the point you could straight up say it's just speedcore. If you've ever seen any of the Genso hardcore albums floating around the internet, this is who's responsible for it. And although they no longer produce, 
They have a reputation of having some of the most brutal sounding remixes in the scene. This is someone who Crocodile would stumble on and eventually take inspiration from, starting with a remix of the classic Heartland's Yokai Go to create something that not only goes hard, but is a much more elegant nod towards Moro's usually rough style. And this will end towards the birth of a saga of Toho remixes. Over the next year, Kurokote would carry on her trajectory, creating maps and creating music, both original and remixed alike. Over the course of this year, her mixing and general ability in sound design would improve massively, with this being best highlighted in Chrysal Barrel, a collaboration with Mimineko, who now seems to be inactive. Not only is this in a league of his own compared to everything before it, but this is a special one because a little while later, this would actually end up being featured in Dynamics, marking Kurokote's debut into Riven Games around 2016. And rightfully so, its speed and synth melody makes it a perfect candidate for a good chart that isn't too hard. And because it's short, it's a trance song that you can say doesn't feel repetitive, keeping the listener nice and engaged. Not only does it get a cool chart, but look at that cat. The cat's name is Chrysoberry. Unlockable by playing the song in event mode, and he gives an extra 10% XP, 20% HP, and 10% heal. It's even cooler when you realize that Chrysler Barrel is a reference to a semi-precious greenish gemstone that has the nickname Cat's Eye because of its color and texture. There's levels to this sh man. Truly, an underrated classic from both Kuro and Mimi. Though, if we want to get technical, this wasn't exactly her first debut into Riven Games. See, the song released straight after Chrysler Barrel is simultaneously the best and worst moment in Kurokote's career. Again, bearing inspiration from Moro and taking from her now two Toho remixes, one of which is a 2015 remix of Nuclear Fusion. Kurokote took Heian Alien from Toho 12's Extra Stage and completely transformed it to create the infamous Galaxy Collapse. The song took approximately 7 hours to make and is a special one because of just how many BPM changes it has. Citing from Crocote herself, the song begins at 270 BPM and the first break is at 155 BPM. The song then slowly builds up to 520 BPM, only to then flatten out to 300 BPM for the chorus, and so on and so forth until it ended about 320 BPM in the final section. It's definitely a hectic and creative song in its aspect of complete chaos, and it's a style that we definitely had not seen from it before. Pair that with the fact that it genuinely was just a hype song, and from there, it would end up going absolutely ballistic. However, there are many more reasons for that, starting with Kurokate herself. The thing is, she's also a mapper, right? Sometime after Galaxy Collapse's release, she had the brilliant idea to create a Tycho map to the song. But not just any Tycho map. See, Galaxy Collapse is a song that naturally lends itself to difficult charting because of its speed and length. So when a 6 minute 8.37 star map dropped into the modern key out of nowhere, let's just say it was pretty unheard of at the time, and seemingly against all odds, this would end up actually being ranked in October of 2015. This was THE most difficult Tycho ranked map back then, being the first 8 star to be ranked in that game mode, and it's still considered one of the hardest ranked maps today because of its very fast patterns over an extremely long period of time, making it almost impossible to even attempt to get an FC, unless you're a world class player. However, whilst it held that reputation for a while, the song didn't end up exploding from this, no. See, in the description, Crocote left a little note that simply stated, Yes, I made the song. You can map it if you want. It's not like I really care. Don't forget to credit me though. And some people will end up becoming inspired by that to begin creating other maps of the song, many of which didn't see the light of day. But there was one whose map in particular seemed to come at just the right time at a game mode that was still relatively new in comparison with his peers. Osmania. In a time where Osmania's full key ranked section was still growing, especially when it came to higher end difficulty, a fellow UK Osmania player, he goes by Matt, noticed the serious lack of difficulty in the ranked section and sought out to create the hardest ranked full key marathon to match with Tycho's hardest marathon, which was undisputably Galaxy Collapse. This would end up being the cataclysmic hypernova map set, submitted on the 3rd of January 2016. And after a fairly lengthy modern process involving a complete rework of the chart, as well as some assistance from Crocote herself, it officially became ranked on the 25th of July 2016. This 
immediately rose to become one of the most controversial maps in Osmania history because it brought a lot more attention to just how inaccurate the star racing system was and showed everyone that you can game the PP system by making maps that just requires you to mash your keyboard rather than play actual complex patterns. But on the other hand, because it was 1. a pretty decent sounding song, 2. One of the highest star rated charts at the time that wasn't complete bullshit and free, also considered an easy top play. It was looked up to highly and became the face of Osmania's rank section for a while. Every player's goal was to get an FC or an SS on the map for the bragging rights, as well as to maximize the PP gain. And well, this was where it really began to gain traction. What then sealed the deal was when an extremely difficult O standard map set became loved not even 6 months later. It turns out this was actually submitted before Matt's map set, but remained in purgatory for a while. Probably because of how ludicrous the map is, before getting the status it has now. Brumaster L made a pretty good video covering the history of that map, so if you want more information about that, go check that out. Kurokote would also make another Toho remix in August of 2016 that could be considered the sequel to Galaxy Collapse, Scattered Faith, a remix of Toho's emotional skyscraper, which would follow the same path as Galaxy Collapse. The song is mapped and naturally is mapped to be absurdly difficult. People end up flocking to the map because of that, and that compounded into an explosion of popularity. These two songs remain big breadwinners of Kurokote's audience, but like I said in the beginning, this would end up being more of a burden to her because it misrepresented her later musical direction, and it wouldn't take long before she would begin to hate these two songs and wish she had never released them. Especially Galaxy Collapse, which I honestly can perfectly understand. Some of you guys really cannot give her a break. At the very least though, it was what put her on the map. No pun intended. And now that the spotlight was beginning to shine on her, she took this as an opportunity to begin taking music a bit more seriously. In 2015, whilst Kurokote continued with expanding her compositional repertoire, there was one song in particular that seemed to mark the beginning of a brand new era for her that would change her direction and take her to a higher degree in composition. Released on the 1st of November 2015, Valkyrie Attack was an hardcore song with an emphasis on the sound of an impending doom. I'm a really big fan of the melody and the instruments used, not to mention the way it actually tends towards Drumstep. Drumstep is actually something that she dipped her toes in just after Galaxy Collapse in a song called Iceland, and it was something that proved to be pretty difficult, with even her saying that it was her first and last attempt because she sucks at it. Makes sense, since it wasn't something she was used to, it would require her to take her sound design out of her comfort zone. But whilst the sound was a bit rough around the edges, it was compositionally sound and therefore a banger. Valkyrie Attack expands on the sound she explored here, though it does fall a little bit short as it begins to progress, feeling a little too empty and just not being expressive enough. It's still a pretty cool song though, and it turns out this is part of a project that's thought after what BMS players still can only dream of today an active western audience. Because I suspect a lot of OS players will come across this, quick explanation of what BMS is. It stands for the B Music Source, which is the standard file format used by Beatmania 2DX simulators that has all the information about the charts stored in it. This video will turn into a technical nightmare if I explained everything, but one of the biggest things about Beatmania is that everything is key sounded, as in there is no mp3 playing in the background, but rather each key literally represents a part of the song, and what you hear in game depends on how accurately you're hitting. The formats of BMS also include Incorporates this, requiring the song to be sliced up into key sounds and distributed between each and every note of a chart. This sounds great on paper, but proves to be a big issue when you're trying to get individual sounds out of a fully mixed song whose sounds are already all blended together. So, as a result, BMS creation lent itself much more to the creation of original music for charts so that you have full control of the stems, leading to the evolution of an incredibly vibrant scene with decades of music composition behind it. And unfortunately, that scene has mainly only grown in Japan to the dismay of anyone outside of there. But B Music West wanted to change this. It wanted to incentivize the western side of the community and introduce newer players to the idea of events and BMS creation. And thanks to the efforts of Dolphin and Agka, the event ended up becoming a reality, being announced on September the 3rd, 2015, and opening registration from January the 9th to January the 16th of 2016 to then open for an impression period the following week. Many notable artists ended up submitting, and at the top of the list, we had Krokote with Valkyrie Attack, serving as her debut into the BMS scene. Many of the impressions that she would end up receiving reflect what I criticize about, as well as issues with the audio and the chart itself, but many still recognize it as a song with great atmosphere and potential. And with the submission of this track, 
A whole new world opened up for Kurokate in the midst of her rise in popularity, a world that allowed her to expand her horizons as well as gain real criticism. In a similar fashion, carrying on with her momentum, she would end up returning to Oz. Word around the block was that there was a new remix contest being ran for the new Oz startup theme in town, Circles by Nekodex. You were given the stems of the song and you had the simple, simple task of making the best remix you can, with the only real restriction being that the main melody must clearly be in the song. Not only would this be a chance to show off to the community, but supposedly Oz's stuff as well, citing Seismix, Nekodex and Peppy himself, not to mention the chance for some moolah. Kurogote would submit her remix in May of 2016, maintaining the drum and bass vibe of the original song, but introducing the dubstepy complexio element to it. And whereas Circles is much more upbeat, the chords used in the remix makes it sound a lot more emotional and reflective instead. It's a really good take on Circles that shows off her growing prowess in sound design. And honestly, I prefer this over both Circles and the super old Oz theme we had back in the day. It seems over 2000 others agreed with me. Uh, at least partially, with over 9% of the votes belonging to her, Kurokote took the runner-up position pretty comfortably, and being beaten out by nobody but none other than Billy Emoto. As a side note, despite what I said, I'm disappointed that Daiki wasn't the winner when he clearly swept the competition, and part of me isn't being ironic when I say that. But I digress. Kurokote really hit the ground running now, and following up from her debut in BMS, she decided to join in on the biggest BMS event of the year for the first time, the BMS of Fighters Ultimate in 2016. That line is almost traditional at this point, isn't it? It was within the BMS of Fighters that she joined on a team with six others, including Sotui, who you may recognize if you played Cytus, and Zoe Van West as a composer and singer respectively. We also had Ovenize for Charlton, and Six Xenon 9, and King Harkinian for background animation to make Team Byzantium Firmament. As a team full of relatively new faces, it was a surprise to see what they were capable of with their free songs. Sotui and Zoe Van West released Cherry Blossoms 4, a song borrowing from mainstream hardcore and j -core alike that features some of the hardest kicks known to man. Meanwhile, Kurokote took a slightly different approach with the release of not one, but two tracks. Both of her songs were a lot calmer and related in some way to the concept of time. Actually, on the concept of concepts, as time goes on, her way of storytelling and creating concepts through songs increases tenfold, and the origin of that happening, at least as far as I know, started with these two songs. Let's start with Fractured Temporal. This song makes one thing clear to me. Her compositional skills have improved majorly from Valkyrie Attack. The melody is just full of life in comparison to things I've heard from her before this, and the mix sounds much fuller this time, with the classical instruments sounding amazing laid on top of each other. What seems to be a central instrument, actually, is the violin, which, if you recall what I said at the very beginning of the video, judging by the text shown right before the big drop, perhaps this could be related to how quickly her time spent with music flew. Who knows, but it's a nice subtle reference to her roots, and to be honest, this is one of my favourites to come from her. Ever. Next we have what is definitely one of her more popular songs, Chronostasis. Reason being, this song would eventually end up being added to Archaea in 2017, and anyone who's played knows that this is the chart that serves as a bit of a bridge between 8s and 9s. Although it got nerfed to an 8 in a recent update, since it's considered very easy for its rating, it still definitely is a chart that will take up and coming players by surprise, mainly because of the speed of the ground notes and the occasional awkward fingering needed. All of this done to fit the unrelenting piano runs present throughout. Couple that with the drum and bass style percussion, the clock ticking sounds and the chorus, which for some reason I only just realised were actually voices laid on top of each other to create the lead melody. From all that, you quickly see why the song itself is dubbed as Timeless Artcore, because it makes this song timeless. Both of these songs showcase a clear vision that Kurokate was working towards, and while she will still continue experimenting in other genres, as you later see, it's from this point you'll find her leaning towards the side of Artcore. The funniest thing about these two songs is that, performance-wise, they didn't end up doing crazy well. Fractured Temporal got a ranking of 207th in the individual section, and Chronostasis got 276th. Not bad considering how stacked the song list is, but being in the hundreds gets you lost in a sea of other songs. So, as you can imagine, they went very far under the radar. Until Chronostasis began to pick up steam from Archaea, shout out to whoever scouted the song for the game by the way, and Fractured Temporal picked up steam from Chronostasis' grown popularity, and just generally being a banger. I already implied this in my last video about Silent Room, just goes to show that rankings and impressions don't matter as much as people think they do. So to all my BMS artists out there, just go out and have some fun. Speaking of, Team Byzantium would then return again in 2017's BOF, retaining the same team members as before, bar Zoe Van West, Ovnize and King Harkin, and adding new members, Gune, 
Kirkus, Missionary, Usuro, and Victor 64N to create the Renaissance. And boy, what a fitting name because these guys completely added themselves compared to last year. Sotui and Missionary came in hardcore with another J Mainstream hardcore track with what has to be the heaviest bass kick I've ever heard being used to fuel Missionary's over the top composition. A track that hits even harder than last year and with a cool background animation to boot made by 6 Zen on 9 We also had Yahiro Dono by someone who goes by Usuro, which is a modern take on traditional Japanese style music that adheres to the standards of the fast and electronic sound of BMS, while showing off the beauty of that side of Japan. This song was the highest score, and for Utsuro's first debut in BMS, man was it a banger entry. Meanwhile, Krokote once again had contributed two songs out of the team's roster. First was Luminescent, a song that uses an irregular drum pattern to build a world controlled by some of the most satisfying bass wobbles I've ever heard. I'm not sure what the technique is called, but there's a sick distortion kind of thing going on that adds a ton of flavor to each one, only to then break into a standard article section towards the end with a lovely piano melody. This was a collab with Kune, who unfortunately seems to be inactive now, and the background animation was again made by 6 Zen Online, which I'm a huge fan of. A bit shocking, it ended up not getting many impressions, but I honestly think that this song will stand the test of time if it ever gets added to any official rhythm game. To go from Iceland to this, in my opinion, it shows off some of her best work in sound design, and it truly deserves more. In addition to Luminescence, was what was the ace song of the team? Dubbed as an art break, this song goes by A Star. Now at first glance, this name and this background seems to have no meaning. That is, until you look at the description. You should be able to recognize that this is code for something. But not just any code. If you dabble in programming or IT in general, you may be familiar with some of the standard algorithms normally used for what's called graph searching. If you're particularly well versed, you'd immediately recognize that this is actually a version of the A Star search a type of heuristic algorithm that finds the shortest path from a specified source to a specified goal. This algorithm is extremely popular for its completeness, simplest to implement, and optimality, and this entire song is both a visualization and audioization, I guess, of the A-star algorithm, creating a song that gradually gets more intense the closer the algorithm gets to its goal. Kurokote is someone who is shown to be very into IT, so to see an entire song based on this is not a surprise. And the background art, created by Circus, has many references to microcontrollers, polygon environments, and an actual star that eventually finds its destination node. Overall, as both an hardcore fan and computer scientist, this is by far one of my favorites to come from Kurokate, and I sure do hope I've introduced some of you to its brilliance. It gets an A star from me. With four stellar songs, by the end of the event, the Renaissance collectively managed to score a total of just over 99,000 points, landing them 50th out of 166 teams. Not bad, all things considered. And while it's a big improvement from last year in terms of placement, it's an even bigger improvement from last year in terms of song quality. Of course, Krokote would not only do this, but also continue delivering outside of BMS, continuing to upload on their SoundCloud and on their YouTube. Some of these are really good remixes, but the majority are some very interesting experimental tracks. Some of these tracks also seem to be tied to specific labels. For instance, the track that comes straight after A Star, 0x92BC is the one that, in the description, is said to be released as part of HTRNY Volume 1, a compilation album by, fittingly, How Shiny Industries, a now defunct music net label hailing from France with a focus on experimental and digital art. There really isn't any info about these guys aside from their band camp, and it's here their albums are located, including the HTRNY Volume 1. I say this song has one of the trippiest things I've ever heard. That being the section from 1 minute 4 seconds to about 125, where the kick seems to be operating at a completely different BPM to everything else, resulting in this. A little too trippy for my taste, but it immediately picks up from there. Actually psych, no it doesn't. It returns to that desync thing, before bridging with a very glitchy orchestra, only to end with a breakcore and hardcore infusion. Uh. Yeah, this song has to be one of the most erratic things I've ever heard. I can feel myself going insane just listening to it. And I feel like the feeling expressed is something that actually fits very well, with the title at least. The title? You mean just a bunch of nonsense? I hear you say. Well, if you're again familiar with the workings of a computer, or have a background in number bases, you would know about hexadecimal. And if you convert the hexadecimal shown here into its decimal representation, which is the numbers we're all familiar with, we get 37,564. Okay. And, well, 
Okay, this is something that's very specific and extremely clever, but if I say the phrase Mina Goroshi to you, does that have any meaning? I know that there's some of you that recognize it despite not knowing any Japanese, you fucking weebs, but it's a phrase that roughly translates to kill them all. Now, if you were to say get a Japanese dictionary and look at the possible readings of each digit of this number in Japanese, one possible combination you can get is me, na, go, ro and she. Although this is a very popular wordplay already in Japan, the way it was incorporated here and hidden through hexadecimal is just as clever. And although it's a song that will chip you out, it's something that grows on you. Either that, or you just find it really great to listen to, which I can understand. Another track she released on the HAL Tranny Industries was Include Signal.h, another reference to programming, with include being a way to include a header file on your program, and Signal.h being what contains the headers for program signals. Not literal electronic signals, but signals sensed by programs when they want a certain thing done by the operating system. For instance, when they need to be killed. It's another trippy one, but this time less so in its timing and more in the constant BPM changes. Ironically, similar to the oscillation of an actual signal. The song gives Psytrance with a mix of breakcore and with the speed of speedcore, balancing all that out with an expressive melody. This came as a part of HTRNI Volume 2. However, for some reason, this is not on their bandcamp. Maybe it got taken down for some copyright or something? Either way, it seems that Signal.h is the last fragment from HTRNY Volume 2 that exists on the internet, at least officially. Overall, at this point in time, it seems like the tide has definitely shifted now. What was originally a very discernible sound, like when she would do art core speed core has now evolved to something completely different and completely unrecognizable. Despite me attempting, I couldn't give you a concrete answer as to what the genres of some of these songs actually are. It's quite literally just whatever sounds good. And that's probably what I enjoy the most. You never know what to expect when you click on a karaoke song. Really, anything goes. And the absolute personification of this comes in an entry to the BMS of Fighters 16 in 2019. Byzantium carries on with their conquest, this time going under the alias Destruct, with the main roster being Krokote and Billy Moto, which is a musical match made in heaven, as well as 6 Zen on 9, Inukoro, A0 Project, Dolphin, Psyche, and Tonosuke, supporting with background animation, charting, and lyrics? Yeah. The song that would be submitted, going by Alice Morn, was a bit unique when it came to its direction, with a large focus of it being on storytelling through music and of course the background. The creation of Alice Morn actually starts in about March or April of 2019 when she became inspired by a song called Karma by Mason Book Girl. Karma itself is a song whose lyrics are pretty vague, but Kurokote got a feel for it regardless and from that came up with an idea for a concept, a love story gone wrong. From there, Kurokote got to work, adopting the pop rock feel of Karma and morphing it into what I could best describe as artcore. Adopting the pop rock feel also meant, of course, keeping the vocals, and originally Kurokote wanted to find a vocalist for it, but unfortunately couldn't find one on time, so she opted to use a vocaloid instead, which is what you hear in the song. And the lyrics sang were written by Dolphin, which are a bit hard to hear in the actual song, but thankfully is included within the readme of the chart, so it's not the end of the world. On top of this, the background art was made by Unukoro, who was directed by Kurokote to use Obotol from Friends 2012 as a reference for what would eventually represent a tale of quite literally breaking bonds with someone, leaving them unforgiven. This, paired with Billy Moto's Ruby, which would be the intro to his new album, Rabbit Hole, would end up shaking the competition, and by the end, Destruct would end up placing 29th, with Ruby placing 68th, and Alice Moon placing at a well-deserved 30th. Not a thing I expected from Kurokote, and something that I'm surprised isn't in more rhythm games. It was sometime after submitting this, on December the 6th, 2019, that Kurokote would then drop her first ever album, into the Void. This was a special one because much like Signal.h and Co, it wasn't released independently. Except this also wasn't released under HAL 20 Industries. Rather, it was released under Ryzen Sun Tracks, a label owned by her former teammate, Sotui. You may notice, however, that nowadays it's under a label called the Mind Shards Music Group, which also seems to be owned by Sotui. Not sure if this is supposed to be replacing Ryzen Sun Tracks or if it's a separate thing, but that's where the album is now. So, Sotui and an individual named Ivan Sequiero took it upon themselves to help out with the mixing and mastering process and with that Krokote dropped 11 tracks some of which are complete originals and some you may recognize that were remastered and or extended. The album is a pretty good summary of what to somewhat expect from Krokote if you're a new listener and on the other hand is a fantastic album if you're already familiar with her but are just looking for more from her. Between the intense hardcore, artcore, 
orchestras and the side trance that I'm 90% sure is a nod to Infected Mushroom. There is something out there for everyone here. I won't lie to you, when I first listened to it, it did feel a little bit short, and a lot of the tracks left me feeling a little bit unsatisfied, as if there could be more, you know? But I still find myself coming back to it every so often, and with each passing time, I feel myself growing to love this album for what it is, and I can assure that if you've watched this far, you would end up feeling the same way. From here, she would continue on her path of composing, each song being as great as the last. Some that are amazing interpretations of genres she's listened to, some that give you space to reflect on yourself, some that are stories in and of themselves that I again hope to talk about very soon, and some that are just bangers. Long story short, Crocote is a fantastic artist, heavily misrepresented, and ironically, heavily underrated. If this video didn't manage to convince you, then hey, I guess she just isn't your cup of tea. I can respect that. Either way, she's already left a huge mark in rhythm game with her music, but this is definitely only the beginning for her. And well, I wish nothing but success to the Black Emperor. Before I go, here's some honourable mentions of things I didn't get around to talking about, but are still just so good. And with that, I encourage you to explore her discography, and as always, be sure to support Kurokose. Link to her platforms are in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more, and comment who you want to see next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in a bit.